<laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Welch. I'm Shiny Toy Guns manager, among others, and in the past have spent 20 years working at record labels, from small independents like Earache Records and Relativity to major labels like Columbia, Epic, Atlantic, and Arista. I think the way that the market economy for buying and selling music is actually more in the hands of the consumer now than the supplier. Um, iTunes does have a particular price that they set for a song download. Sometimes they put that on sale. But at the end of the day, if a consumer wants to pay less for a song or pay nothing for a song, they can go on a legal forum like Spotify and they can listen to it with a free account. If they are really enamored with that song, they can go buy it on iTunes. And if they become enamored with the full album, then they can spend more money and they could buy, they can build your out al the album to be the complete album, taking into account the single that they've already paid for. And they can spend $10 on the album. So it's really from zero to $10 here or zero to $12, depending on what you, what you're purchasing. So, I think that's a positive thing for the consumer in this day and age. In the past, you would walk into a record store, a record would be $9.99, $12.99, maybe it goes on sale for $7.99 at some point. You had to sit and wait for that. You couldn't determine that I want to spend this much or this little for a song or a record on any, in any given moment in a day and, and have that as an option, and now you do. I mean, I guess in the past, the artist would have been compensated because some, the library had to purchase the physical record to put in their library to then loan out. Wouldn't they still need to do the same thing? Or are we saying that we're going to give the library content for free? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I think as, as libraries become digital, I mean, there, there probably isn't that much difference between uh, the library and Spotify, really. I mean, it's like if you can go and listen to a song on in the library for free. I mean, they're going to support themselves somehow. I don't know if it's going to be by the government that supports libraries now and taxpayers' dollars, or if it'll be through advertising because the government doesn't have enough money to spend on libraries anymore and they've been shuttering them. But I kind of think that the artists should be compensated in a similar way like they are with a Spotify play. I mean, I don't think it should be that little Whoa. of a royalty, <laughs> but I, I think that they should be compensated in a similar way. Oh. I, I think that I think the internet has definitely leveled the playing field of you know uh, of releasing music. I mean, it puts it more in the artist's hands. It puts it more in the independent labels' hands who couldn't afford to spend the kind of money that a major record label would in the past and pro and still can't. Um, I think that it's great that you have that control now. I mean, the, it's a blessing and a curse. It's like, I, I call it Medusa. It's like every time you handle two websites um, of a certain type, then there's three more to replace it that you also have to handle. And handling all of the, this massive amount of uh, websites, web stores, um, new applications, I mean, it's just, so, it, it's, it's, multiple full-time jobs in itself, whereas before you just had to deal with a record company and a publishing company and, you know, a, a, a lawyer, a legal team, an accounting team, and that was really it. So as a manager now, it's a 24-7 job. If it wasn't before, it certainly is now, and it's a 24-7 job that you need a small army to build behind you. I mean, that army used to be the record company, now that army is yourself. So I, I love having it in my own hands, yet at the same time, there, there's no downtime. I don't think it matters. I don't think the iTunes pricing matters because I think that you can go on the internet and you can get the, you can get the satisfaction of hearing a song for free, or you can get the satisfaction of hearing a song by owning it and paying a dollar twenty nine for it. So the choice is yours. I mean, you didn't used to be able to go into a record store and listen to the music before you spent twelve ninety nine or whatever on on a record album or fifteen seventeen ninety nine on a CD. But you could go into a bookstore and you could read a book in the aisle. You could go test drive a car. You could go try on a t-shirt in a store before you bought it, but you could never do that with music. I mean that was a luxury situation that the record industry had at the time. You know, 
to control the fan base. But once the fan base had a little bit of power to say, you know what, we don't want to spend seventeen ninety nine on that CD that has one good song on it. And once you could listen to all the music in the record store, once you could listen to the music online, the price point went from seventeen ninety nine to zero. And now at least we've trained some of the public not to just download music for free and actually you know, be honest and buy some music from a store, but at the end of the day, if a consumer wants to hear something for free, it's out there and they can get it.